Lesson 158. Review of Prepositions. You know, Catherine, whenever you're supposed to give a speech, the advice they give you is this. They say, divide your speech into three parts. First, tell them what you're going to tell them, and then tell them, and then tell them what you told them. So, yep. <laughs> and so that's really the, <laughs> that's the structure I followed here. At the beginning of our group of lessons on prepositions, we had an introductory lesson, and now we have examined lots of prepositions individually, and now we're going to review them. So this is when we're going to tell them what we told them. So with that in mind, let's do a quick review of what we've been telling our listeners about prepositions. We've been giving them a, a big picture approach of how prepositions work in ancient Greek, again, in a very general way. And so we've said that different kinds of prepositions tend to work with certain cases. And we've divided that into three groups, prepositions that show motion from, prepositions that show something staying in one place, and prepositions that show motion toward. And in the first category, we have prepositions that show motion from, so that's a po and ek, x, and they take the genitive case. And then prepositions that show staying in one place, n with the dative. And then prepositions that show motion toward something, pros and eis with the accusative. And again, as you go forward, this can get more complicated. You'll find exceptions. You'll find old archaic sayings that don't really make sense because they're just sort of old sayings that just sort of have come down and stood the test of time. Mm -hmm. So it, it can get weird as you go into more advanced things, but this is a good general set of guidelines that will give you some uh, reliable guidance as you enter the world of ancient Greek. 